Hi. So um, tonight I'm going to be discussing about the case statement in SQL, which is basically a conditional expression. Um, before I start, um, I'm going to show some code that isn't good, and I will tell you when it's bad, and please do not do it because it's bad. Um, this is this. I really like the SQL command largely because it is similar in almost every of my two favorite databases and my my least favorite database. So, personally, I like to think of conditional expressions like if, else, if, and of course else logic commands in SQL. So, what do I mean by that? So, let's say you have a table, very simple, we have a private key, a name, and a level. Now, let's say, let's say we want to give a certain discount to somebody at the gold level and somebody at the silver level because they're paying a monthly fee. So we could simply write, using the case expressions, this SQL command. As you can see here, at the top we're specifying the case, which is the, the statement we would like, what, what column we want to use it under, and when it's gold, we want to give them a, a discount of 0.2%, well, 20%. When it's silver, we want to give them a discount of 10%. And then if there is nothing there, we give them no discount because they didn't pay for our expensive service. Which then replies back with an added column at the very end, which basically gives us this command. Now, this of course is a very simplified um, statement. There's only three rows. But when you have larger rows, it kind of comes in useful. Okay, don't do this. But let's just do something strange for fun. Let's say we have a bunch of products in a database. We have apples, bananas, coffee, and at different amounts. So let's use the database to actually apply the discount and see how much it is. Again, this isn't the best idea because it's a little complicated. But basically, what we do is we run a case to get the actual value we need. Well, first we add a, we, we take away it by one to get the actual discount that's going to be applied. We then times the, the value of that between this select within a select, which then gives us the total of the cost. And this will return this fancy thing, which basically tells us how much the discount is. This is a really bad idea. Um, in my time with, with now, I get really kind of upset when anyone discusses performance in databases because performance in database can't be just said off willy-nilly in a talk. Um, there's a gazillion different factors that go into actually the discussion of performance in databases, including what type of data you're curing, where your bottlenecks are, the entire plethora of things. So generally when somebody says, this is fast or this is slow, more than likely they're talking out of their ass. Um, so this though is bad. It requires multiple different additions and subtractions, which ends up actually becoming a bottleneck when you have this running over multiple times. Um, in, this, in this scenario, we're basically running it over a small amount of rolls and it doesn't take that long. So, what was I gonna say here? Oh yeah, sorry, my speaker notes aren't available. Um, what was I gonna say? Something about, okay. Um, another fancy thing that we can use um, cases for is customize ordering. So I believe everybody knows the basic ordering. Here we're saying order by the name and doing it from A to B, C, D, etc. But that returns us this. Now, I really care about this Willard person. I believe anyone with a W at the beginning of their name should be at the top of the list. So. <laughs> So here, we're basically saying, we're using the, the case man again, and when the name is, begins with a W, that's basically a like, which with a do, um, percentage sign basically means begins with W, then we're gonna assign it the value of one. You might be asking, why are we assigning it a value of one and not assigning it a true or false value? Because SQL and MySQL, SQLite and MySQL don't actually have a true or false statement within them, and if when they do have it, it sometimes returns incorrectness on how it should work, but in the end it just stores it in the back end of one or a zero. Um, I haven't really experimented that much with Postgres with that, but 
My assumption is it either has it or doesn't. <laughs> So um, I always believe that it's whatever I thought of at the time. Um, <laughs> to be perfectly fair, I, this is actually one of my major problems uh, with when I have to deal with dys dyslexia, is actually remembering if zero or one is true or false. So generally in my code, this, is, this switches on an almost constant basis. Um, I do like um, ORMs, which give you the actual written true or false. I'll actually, uh, I can't demo that. I was going to demo it, but I can't demo it. So basically here, we're, we're telling it to do this new column called VIPs. And then at the bottom, we're telling it that we want to order first our VIPs and then by name. And then that arranges our table like so. So we have all the Ws on top because they're VIPs and the rest of the no nodes at the very bottom. So that's about all I have for slides. Um, what else? If I had my, I forgot the Jupyter Notebook. Um, I guess I'll also talk, so another great thing with cases is actually being able to do um, dates and being able to curate based off of certain dates. So if you wanted a date within a range, so as an example, um, you would like to put anything within, let's say, quarters. So you have like Q1, which would be the date of like 001, 01, like whatever the year is. And then you add quarter two, which goes from certain dates to certain dates. You can actually curate based off of those different records within the system, and then have your data actually be able to be indexed by that. Um, I'm a firm believer that state shouldn't actually be saved in a field in a database. I believe state should actually be calculated. Um, now, why does that matter? Because humans don't update things well. And generally, when we have state as a dropdown or even a field that's carried through the database, at a certain point, a human has to interact with it. And the human, a hundred out of 99 times, will make a good idea turned bad. Um, one example of this is most CRM systems with complex workflows have different states that are saved within the database, stages and statuses, and they are constantly being edited by humans for good reasons and bad reasons, and the vast majority of time the good reasons hurt a lot more than the bad reasons. Um, there's, there's a bunch of this stuff that goes on, so having state actually being calculated somehow in a database format allows for an actual structured thing of what actually means what. And it forces the user to be like, no, or let's say the DevOps or the administrator, no, I have to do X to do this. And I'm not going to mass update everything in this way that screws up the entire workflow system that it might be saved in a Redis database and is all of a sudden screwing up the entire site. Um, yeah. So I think I did five minutes, or I did four or three. Um, anyone want to have questions? Yeah, you mentioned uh, on one of the previous slides, don't do this. What was the reason not to do it? So, there's a couple of reasons not to do this. Um, number one, you're, uh, this probably would make a lot more sense. It's not cacheable, which is kind of the major one. Um, doing this in, like, in terms of like, doing this, I'm just trying to think of the, the right verb to use. What if you have a room if you've got, if you've got 100 levels and millions of records, you multiply and these are just bad? Yeah, like it's, this, this would actually be much easier to be done. Like, let's say you're Amazon, and um, like you have, you know, ooh. Oh, that's not good. That's also not good. <laughs> of course, the one that works, works. So, so the, the markers are in the... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say you have A, B, C, D, and then you have prime discounts, right? Which I believe is like 10% or something. So you can apply it basically to all of these, 
But what ends up happening is every time it runs, it has to run through that entire thing. Pagination kind of suffers sometimes because of this, even though limits are there. It still has to run that kind of query. Um, you have this, any, any, any arithmetic that's being done is kind of putting a strain on the database. Um, actually, a good person's talk, did David Willover talk about count star here? Yes. Yeah, you should definitely check out his talk. He describes kind of what goes on behind the scenes when you do these types of insanity. Like, they're great for the one-off things when you just want to say like, hey, let's just quickly do this. But when you do any kind of advanced SQL, it kind of ends up, it kind of ends up being structured in a weird way. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you could do this. It's, it's good to have this knowledge it's not good to use it in production. It becomes kind of a stability nightmare. Yeah, what, what I would most likely do is um, I would probably have this already cached and then doing the calculations off on some other thing, which would then be, well, I would have that probably running in like the model or something like that. That way it's just giving me the cached return and then doing the quick calculation doesn't really provide that much overhead of a problem. Um, yeah. That would probably be it. Um, Bill and then William. Um, <laughs> is there any advantage to this over either triggers or stored procedures? Um, I don't really like triggers or stored procedures. Um, from a person, from a personal opinion, is a lot of the the really hardcore DBA stuff isn't being passed down well enough anymore that there isn't that much domain knowledge in there. Like I could probably write a stored procedure, but it would take me an hour to remember how to write it. I could probably remember a trigger, but it would also take me an hour to remember. Um, this I find is just a lot faster and simpler and the syntax works better. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. William? Uh, just a basic question. Um, what happens if there are more than one apple? Will you get a joint? Like, uh, yes. Like multiple. Um, yeah, records? this would this would return. This would return multiple records. That would probably times it by both of those numbers. Am I wrong, Chris? That would be my assumption. Generally, you would have a private key being accessed. Multiple apples. Yeah, you'd be liable to have an error at that point if you had multiple multiple results. Okay, there, if you have multiple instances of a product here, you're multiplying you're multiplying a matrix by something, and like APL is happy about that, but SQL's not. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. No, I've had I've had this case all the time. I've had this case all the time yeah, in yeah. applications. So yeah. you select if I so, if I select it if I so, if I ask for a value and I get five values. It's actually worse in this it's case. It's a kaboom. It's, it's a worse in this case because you might actually get a real uh, a real answer that's complete garbage. But you, you, if there's two uh, uh, two apples, for example, you might just concatenate them and then multiply that. Uh, no, it's it's no, it should not. it should complain. It should, uh, well, it's, it, it is doing multiplication, so it's assuming whatever comes out is a single number. So if you get multiple things out of that, it'll it, well, I know it's, if it if it think that you know it's four three seven five four five five one. <laughs> no, it's it. It asked for a value, and you got multiple values. Mm -hmm. huh. One value versus multiple, a problem. Well, it's not asking for a single value. It would give you... It's not asking for a distinct value. It didn't say distinct, but supposing... Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't think... Like, I, I think you're uh, true. It's probably going to uh, throw an error rather than do uh, a concatenation or something else. But it also may just 
grab like the two numbers or the ten numbers and treat them as a single instance of something. I've no I know I've had error messages out of this of it okay. returned it said no this was a, this was not a single value. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, any other questions? All right, that's great. So that's it. Cool.